This is cool. This is a 2015 Mercedes-Benz CLS 63 AMG shooting brake, and it's the coolest station wagon you've never heard of. You're forgiven, though, for not knowing about this car because Mercedes never sold it here in North America. And yet, here I am in North America, standing next to Mercedes' other 575 horsepower station wagon. And today, I'm going to review it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my new online enthusiast car auction website for modern enthusiast cars. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool car from the modern era, the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and up, check out Cars and Bids at carsandbids.com. I've borrowed this CLS 63 shooting brake from a viewer here in the Los Angeles area named Fahad. He's on Instagram with the username you see on the screen. It's also in the description, so you can click on it and follow him. He has a bunch of cool cars, including an Aston Martin Rapide AMR and a Ferrari GTC4 Lusso, but my personal favorite is this, the CLS 63 shooting brake, probably one of the only ones in the United States. If you don't know this car, you might be wondering what exactly it is. So here's the explanation. Surely you know the Mercedes-Benz CLS, which is Mercedes' sporty midsize sedan. It's sort of a cooler version of the E-Class. Well, for the second generation of the CLS, Mercedes decided to make a shooting brake version, which is an old school term that essentially means a station wagon. These are rare. I've only ever seen a few of them in my life. Mercedes never sold it in North America, but they barely sold it in Europe. It's a tremendously uncommon car there as well. Now, Mercedes made a regular CLS shooting brake, a non-AMG version, but this is the one to have, the 520 horsepower CLS 63 shooting brake. Think of it as a more beautiful, more rare E63 AMG wagon, and you're on the right track. And today, I'm going to review it. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of the CLS 63 shooting brake and show you all the quirks and features of a wagon we never had, a wagon that most people probably have never seen. Then, I'm going to get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the CLS shooting brake in back. Now, you can see the rear end obviously different from the sedan, which is a sedan. This is a wagon. But I will say it doesn't look ungainly or out of place. In fact, I think this car's lines really lended themselves to a shooting brake. It had this kind of swept back look, and it only made sense to just extend the roof line and make a wagon version of it, which honestly is one of the reasons why I suspect they did. They thought this would look good as a wagon, and in fact, it does. It looks natural. Now, as you can see, there's nothing particularly unusual about the back end of this car. It just looks like your fairly typical station wagon. Nothing strange or odd. It does have a rear wiper, like you would expect from a wagon. It is just a fairly standard wagon from the back end. You get up behind this in traffic, you might not realize you're behind something that very few other people have seen. But beyond just the design of the back end of this car, you open up the tailgate, and you quickly see that it looks like a wagon back here too. In fact, there's a pretty large surface area of cargo space back here. It's an impressive spot. There's a lot of room for you to be able to put stuff down in the back of this sedan converted into a wagon. It does the job pretty nicely. The drawback comes when you look up and you realize there's a lot of floor space, but there's not really that much space above. Due to this car's kind of sloping roof line and its sloping tailgate design, you can't put anything really tall or large back here, it's just not going to fit. But you do have a pretty big space unless you're transporting something that's very tall. Then you're going to need an E63 AMG wagon. Now, one of the most interesting things in the cargo area of this CLS is the floor. You can see from a quick glance, it just looks like a cargo floor, but you can use this handle to lift it up and access the spare tire area like you can in most cars. When you do, you can see it stays up with hydraulics. <laughs> 
So it's intended to actually stay up and you put it up or down with hydraulics like a tailgate itself. It's like you have a second tailgate within your cargo area. Now in this space, you can clearly see there's no spare tire here. I'm not exactly sure why that is. In the US, the E63 AMG wagon models do not have a rear spare tire because their wheels are so big that it wouldn't be able to fit. Maybe that's the case here too. But you do have this spare tire well and this cargo cover with hydraulics so you can use this as under floor storage and it's massive. It really adds to your cargo capacity back here. You basically have two cargo areas, the one you can see above the floor and the one below the floor out of the way. But drawback is of course, you don't get a spare tire. And next up, another interesting party trick in the back of the shooting brake. You see this little plastic piece over on the side of the cargo area? Well, if you pull on that, it drops down the rear seats so you can fold it down. Same deal over on the other side. Pull on this little latch and it drops down the seats on the other side. That is a pretty practical thing that you'd expect from a good station wagon. The ability to quickly drop the seats so you can load in a large item. It's interesting to see such a practical feature in this ultra limited production shooting brake. Same deal with the cargo cover. There's a cargo cover back here. You just pull it and then you're covering up your cargo. Again, what you'd expect from a typical station wagon or hatchback, which I guess this is, but it's just surprising to see so many traditional practical features in the back of the shooting brake. And I think that's probably my biggest surprise about this car so far. It's not just an ultra limited production Mercedes you never see here in the States and the high performance AMG version. It's also a practical car with good cargo space back here and that cargo floor that will set up with the hydraulics and all the space underneath and the ability to lower the rear seats and the cargo cover. This is all stuff you'd expect from a practical family SUV. Well, here it is in an ultra rare AMG. And next up, I wanna talk about some other items on the outside of this car before I move inside and take you on a tour. One is the taillights. These are the same taillights from the sedan and they're some of my all-time favorite Mercedes-Benz taillights. I love how they look. For one thing, well, the brake light is on right now, as you can see, and it has this cool look, not just a square or a circle, but it's sort of sculpted to fit the side and the back of the car. But check this out. Put on the turn signal and it has the very same look just inside the brake light. And I always loved how those two corresponded to each other, like the big version and the little version with their same distinctive pattern. I think this is one of the better looking taillights. Now, interestingly, in the United States, the turn signals were red in the CLS from this era, but since this car was not sold here originally, it was sold in Europe, orange or amber turn signals are mandated there. So this one has orange, but in the US, the red signal with the red brake light helped it look even better. Next up, another item worth noting about this car is all the carbon fiber accents on the outside, which look pretty cool. You can see one of them back here, this carbon fiber rear splitter that kind of goes around the quad exhaust in the back looks good. Same deal on the rocker panels on the side below the doors. You can see this long carbon fiber piece and the mirrors are housed in carbon fiber. Again, making this car look even more distinctive than it already does. And same deal up front. You have this big carbon fiber piece in the front bumper. All of those carbon accents really help set this car apart even further. But it's not like this car really needs any help being set apart because well, take a look at it. It's a very distinctive looking car, very different from the regular E63 station wagon. And frankly, I love how this car looks. Like I said earlier, I think the design lends itself well to the shooting brake. It was executed tremendously well. Looks like it was designed to be that way from the beginning. And I really have always felt this is a beautiful car. I really think this is a more beautiful, more special E63 AMG wagon. I just wish Mercedes-Benz had sold it here in the first place. Not that it would have done very well, considering it's a really rare car anywhere, even in Europe, where it was sold new. And next up, since this is a practical family wagon, we've already seen the cargo area, time to check out the back seat. Now, in this car, headroom was always kind of the issue on the sedan models as well, because of its sort of sloping roof design. The thinking was that if you wanted full headroom, you've got an E-Class. If you wanted the sportier, cooler look, you got a CLS. Well, headroom is still a problem in the shooting brake, but it's not that big of a problem. I'm six foot three, six foot four, and my head just barely clears, not uncomfortable, not pushing up against the ceiling. It's fine, but not ideal. Same deal with legroom, surprisingly. This front seat is actually further forward than I would sit if I was sitting in it. And you can see my knees are right up against the front seat. So you can get back here again, not tremendously comfortable, but it's 
fine. Ideal if you have little kids you want to put in the bag, like how you might use a family wagon. Not so ideal if you're trying to transport multiple adults in comfort. With that said, there are some nice amenities back here that enhance the comfort. One is a climate control zone for the rear passengers. You can see it's between the front seats and you can adjust the temperature and the fan speed so you can have your own rear seat climate. Also, there's heated seats back here. You can see there's a little button on the door. You tap it, turn on the heated seats, and then you can sit back here in even more heated, comfortable warmth. And one other interesting item you have back here in the center armrest is a cup holder that's far too complex. <laughs> it looks like a movie creature morphing into its final form, but when it's popped out, it is indeed a cup holder, so you can put your drinks back here while sitting on your heated seat and adjusting the air of your own climate controls. And in that sense, it is a pretty practical back seat here too, just like the cargo area was pretty practical. Again, this special ultra rare AMG 600 horsepower Mercedes is also a fairly reasonable family car. Pretty cool. And next up, we move on to the front of the CLS shooting brake, which is pretty similar to other Mercedes-Benz models from this era and obviously the other CLS, but there are some definite quirks up here, one of which comes when you first turn the car on. In the gauge cluster, it tells you exactly which of your rear passengers are buckled. Now, that's not that unusual. A lot of cars do that. The interesting thing is there is a graphic showing the shooting brake that pops up in your gauge cluster screen. Now, I had an E63 AMG wagon and the graphics that popped up in my screen showed the sedan. But in this car, they went to the trouble of making an actual shooting brake graphic just for this ultra limited production vehicle very annoying. And it's the same deal in the infotainment system. You can see the CLS shooting brake is shown in there, not just a generic picture of a CLS sedan. They actually made sure to make it the correct vehicle, like owners of such an automobile might expect. And next up, another unusual quirk of the interior. When you're driving around at night, obviously there's ambient lighting that lights up parts of the interior so you can see a little bit better. Strangely, there's also ambient lighting on the speakers. The speaker is placed here on the door and it has its own ambient light at night, I guess to let you know that the speaker is there and it's providing sound. Kind of strange to see a speaker mounted there at all, but also to have its own ambient light, but it does in the CLS 63. And next up, another interesting quirk comes in the center console. You can see the center storage lid is clearly split into two pieces. Obviously one for the passenger to rest their arm and one for the driver, no surprise. And there's storage inside. The weird thing is how you get to it. This front piece, which looks like where you're supposed to rest your hand, you actually pull that up and that's the latch that opens up the center storage compartment. Kind of a weird hidden dual purpose in there, but I do like the thinking, the subtle center storage release. And and next up, another quirk in this interior is on the ceiling. You turn on your dome lights in this car and you can see they gradually light up rather than turning on at once. So it looks like a luxury bathroom in here <laughs> with the lights sort of turning on in this calm, luxurious manner. And next up, another cool feature of this car. If you look on the seat bottom, nearest to the center console, you have a group of controls in there. These are extra seat controls for various different items, like turning on the seat massager. Although my personal favorite control in here is the button marked DYN. That stands for dynamic or dynamic side bolsters, which is a really cool feature. Check this out. You turn that on, you're driving around a corner, you turn hard to the right, and the left side bolster inflates in an instant so that you don't move around in the seat. You straighten out the wheel and it deflates again so you have a more comfortable seat. That gives you the benefits of a sport seat, keeping you in place when you're going around corners, but also the benefits of a more comfortable seat since you have more room when you're not in a hard corner. It's a brilliant feature, more cars should have it, and I loved that AMG models from this era had that feature. And next up, speaking of the seats, this car has one of the great hidden storage areas in just about any modern car. In the front of the seats on the bottom, if you know precisely where to look, you can open up this little latch 
and there's a tiny storage area in here where you can stick stuff if you don't want anyone else to find it. Same deal over on the passenger side, this little storage area. Again, no one is ever really going to know that's there, but it is there if you want to conceal stuff and keep it out of the more obvious glove box. And next up, back to the center console for a few other quirks. One I've always liked is on the shifter, you have on the top of it the AMG logo imprinted on there, which looks really cool. The shifter itself, though, is rather unusual. It's this stubby little thing, and for some reason, it's hollow in the middle, so you can stick your fingers through it. <laughs> Seems like kind of a strange shifter for a performance car, but that's what this has. Now, next to the shifter, there's also some quirkiness. This little dial allows you to change the drive mode. You have C for comfort, S for speed. Sport, Sport Plus, or M for manual. On the bottom, it also says RS, but you can't switch the dial to that. It just says RS down there, taunting you. Like, you could have an RS mode, but you don't. Other buttons down here, you can see traction control off button, then you have the suspension firmness button, you can press that and change the suspension setting, and at the bottom, a button marked AMG, which is frankly just a pretty cool button. You press that and it pulls up your pre-programmed drive mode setting, like if you prefer the suspension in comfort, but the acceleration in sport, well, you can have a personal setting that will pull up whenever you press the AMG button. And finally, we move under the hood, you can see this car's massive twin turbo V8. This thing was impressive. Regular versions of this car had 550 horsepower, but this is the AMG S model with 577 horsepower and all-wheel drive. It was, it was a real monster, and in fact, this was the most expensive station wagon on the planet when it was new. Obviously, it has since been surpassed by the Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo Turbo S, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> But this was a really big deal at the time, and with that kind of horsepower, it makes sense precisely why. Massive engine for a massively powerful car. And of course, like all AMG models from this era, this car sounds pretty good too. Take a listen to this car's exhaust. And so those are the quirks and features of the Mercedes-Benz CLS 63 AMG shooting brake. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the CLS 63 shooting brake. <laughs> this is a really cool car. These are rare, these are special. These are even rare and special in Europe, like I said, where they were sold new uh, you know, for a few years. I think they were sold from like 2012 to 16. So this one being a 15 model, pretty late in the run. The thing about this car though is, um, if you've driven an E63, it's pretty similar to that. I'm sure it'll feel a little bit sportier and I'm sure it'll feel a little bit more exciting and, and performancey. I think they maybe tune the handling for a little bit more enjoyment, but the truth is it's the same platform. It's the same powertrain. It's about the same size and about the same weight they're pretty similar cars. But the real party trick here is that back end, which is makes this car like really special and interesting. As you can see, I haven't reviewed a regular CLS 63 sedan from this era, but the wagon, I'm like, yeah, I'm all about that. That's because it's special, it's rare because of that back end. So with that in mind, here's a little... Wow. Man, these cars were so... <laughs> These cars were so fast and they sounded good. They sounded really seriously good. Um, you know, they were muscle cars, were and are. That's kind of the thing about AMG. Whereas BMW and Audi always went for a little more finesse, a little more precision maybe. Mercedes was all about just throwing, and still is, just giant V8s that sounded muscly. And this was the muscle car, you know, AMGs were the muscle cars of the German cars from this era. This thing is fast, fast, and it certainly feels it. Ultimately, driving this car around, it really does feel like driving around a 2014 and up E63 uh, Mercedes. You have all the same technology, a lot of the same interior. One of the things I liked about this era of uh, E-Class, CLS, you're insulated from the road pretty well. The ride is harsh, but not insane. The thing that I always really liked the most about these cars, undoubtedly, is the powertrain, not just because it makes the car fast, but it's really a good powertrain. Twin turbo V8, it has great acceleration at pretty much every RPM. You just, even when you're going 80 and you floor it, you just feel 
instant acceleration, instant torque. Overall, there's no doubt that this is a cool car and I think it's awesome and I think it's amazing to be able to check it out, I really do. Is it cooler than an E63 wagon? To me, yes, but that's mostly because it was never sold in the States and because it looks better. Not anything about the way the car drives or the way the car feels or the way it, you know, when you're sitting in it, how that makes you feel. It's more just about, it's more beautiful and rarer. Otherwise, it's just a more special version of an already special car and I do like it and I really think it's cool and I would love to have this car uh, but in terms of driving performance and stuff take basically everything you say about an E63 and apply it to this car the real trick is just how special and unique this car is especially here in North America and so that's the 2015 Mercedes-Benz CLS 63 AMG shooting brake I have owned two E63 AMG wagons. I'm a big AMG wagon fan, and I have always lusted after this. The E63 wagon is rare and special, but this is rarer and specialer. <laughs> and I'm thrilled that I had the chance to spend the day checking out this ultra rare car. And now it's time to give the CLS 63 shooting brake a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the CLS 63 shooting brake is a handsome car. I really like it. Great for a wagon, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Handling is fine, but this is a big car. It's not exceptional, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Fun factor is good. It's fast and cool, but not particularly adept at high-performance, exciting, curve-type driving. It gets a 6 out of 10. Cool factor is high, especially in the States, and it gets a 7 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 33 out of 50. Next Next up are the daily categories and features. It has a lot of good stuff, but it's aging fast and it gets a 6 out of 10. Comfort is normal for a car like this and it gets a 6 out of 10. Quality is good enough. The interior is relatively nice. Reliability is good. Not perfect, but it's better than average and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is good. It's not as practical as a normal E63 wagon with a larger cargo area, but it's still excellent and it gets a 7 out of 10. Finally, value. And these don't really have a market here in North America. Looking at global prices, they're still surprisingly expensive for what they are given their age and it gets a 6 out out of 10 for a total daily score of 32 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 65 out of 100, which places the CLS 63 shooting brake here against some other fast wagons and relevant vehicles. This is a cool car and it's especially cool in North America where it basically doesn't exist, but it exists here on the Doug DeMuro channel.